Today we're going to talk about three term ratios. Those are ratios, well ratios normally consist of two numbers like A to B. So whereas the ra normal ratios are in the form of two numbers, three term ratios have three numbers that we have to juggle. Okay. So taking a rather ordinary example, we can take an example like hmm, 14 to 8 to at, well, let's say 14 to 8 and treat it as a two term ratio uh, because that's what it is and we'll say that it's equal to y to 4 so we're saying that 14 is to 8 as y is to 4 well we can see that well for one thing we can rewrite it as a fraction so that we get 14 over 8 and this is equal to y over 4 if I'm deciding that the first number goes on top in the numerator of one of the ratios, then in the other ratio, the first number should also go on top in the numerator on its side of the equal sign. So we can see now that 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 2 is 8. So that means we've got to do something with this y. Got to do the same thing with the y meaning that y times 2 must be 14. So y times 2, or of course we could write it as 2y, and we're saying that that's equal to 14. Divide both sides by 2, and we get y equals 7. Right? Divide by 2, divide by 2, and dum-dum, 14 divided by 2 is 7. And there. So we're saying that, therefore, 14 is to 8, equals 7 to 4. That's the new ratio. That's kind of how we're expressing it. All right, so what about three term ratios? What if I had 14 to 8 to x equals y to 4 to 2? How do we deal with this problem? How do we deal with this problem? Now it's likely that you may not have seen three term ratios before. This is the problem we're trying to solve, but this is the kind of problem we so far know how to solve. We know how to, we know how to act or we know what decisions to make with a ratio that has two terms in it. But what about one that has three terms in it? 14 is in proportion to y, 8 is in proportion to 4, x is in proportion to 2. And of course, within the ratios, these are in proportion to each other. So the trick here is when you have a, a problem on a slightly bigger scale, it requires more steps for sure, but it would be a lot easier if we could break this down into problems we know something about. Like for example, a problem we know something about is when there's two terms. Can we break this down into two terms? Yes, we can. First, we can take the first two numbers and compare to these first two numbers. Remember, the order matters. Okay, so then 14 is to 8 is equal to y to 4. The ratio 14 to 8 is equal to the ratio y to 4, but we already did that problem, and we said that y was 7. So from this, we say that y is 7. Well, we saw that already. We said that y was 7, right? The last part of this is 8 to x. So if we break this down, we have 8 to x, 
and we compare this against the last two numbers here, 4 to 2. Okay, So we have 8 to x being the same ratio as 4 to 2. Well, we can break this down into fractions just like we did in the last problem. Notice that's what we did. We took this ratio and broke it into fractions. 14 to 8 became 14 over 8, and y to 4 became y divided by 4. Then we looked for a greatest common factor. Okay, so then 8 over x equals 4 over 2. Now notice, we see that 4 times 2 is 8. It must be that 2 times 2 must be x. So 2 times 2 must be x. So that means x must be 4. 8 over 4 equals 4 over 2. Or So 14 to 8 to 4 is like 7 to 4 to 2.